Uh, hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video and put down below in the comment section what city you are watching from as whenever I scroll through the comments, I always enjoy just reading all these different city names. It's just something fun to me. So put it down below where you're watching from right now and help me out. Answer me this question. What is going on with the Ripple transfers? The reason I'm saying that is because I'm a little bit confused with the way they noted things and really what exactly is being transferred and even how it usually works. Hear me out, right? So what happened earlier this morning was 1 billion was sent. Happens every single month. We see it, we've seen it, we talked about it. Now, what happened too though is, you can see here from one of those escrow wallets, 100 million was sent to Ripple, right? So that is, I think, what they can use to spend. However, a little bit later, you'll notice, all right, so that happened. 400 million has been sent from Ripple escrow wallet to unknown wallet, which I'm then going to assume is being put back into escrow, right? And here's another one, 500 million transferred from Ripple escrow to unknown, which I am assuming is, um, is just transferring to an unknown wallet and then here locking it up basically, right? You can actually check it a little bit if you were to press all these transactions and then you know check through if the addresses work. But the thing I kind of got confused about is exactly how this all goes through and why to do it through such an elaborate way and, and, and why this way and why like that. You know, I'm just really unsure of exactly how they chose to go about it. Cause they're pretty funny. If you check here, one of the um, escrow addresses, for example, you can see here exactly uh, when it's gonna come out, when more is gonna come out, six are scheduled here. You can see 500 million every single time and you can watch the other address if you want to. Uh, for example, we can press the, mm -mm -mm, I guess the 500 million here. And we could just click once more to go to, for example, Bitthumb here and we got everything, right? This is the address right there where you can see it's all being kind of put through, put through, put through. And in the end, it's an escrow creation uh, that happened. The reason I don't, you know, fully understand is because I don't understand the whole process as to why they do it this way, why they've gone for it like that. And I'm going to assume, and you guys must, again, correct me on this one, that this 100 million means that they have left that for themselves to work with. You know, the reason I'm putting this up, I normally don't, I always usually tell this really quickly and then leave it be, is because I'm sometimes thinking that they don't put it back instantly like this, they do it like via a, a second time. Maybe because that's something in their tax structure or in their organizational structure where this can help with the prosecution from the SEC where they are actually still allowed to do what they're doing. Because logically speaking, if you're being sued by the SEC for having such a huge escrow basically or having such a huge amount of XRP, you're definitely not gonna take some out to sell it even more, right? You definitely wouldn't do that, it would be pretty dumb. If they're accusing you of something and you're just gonna quickly continue on with whatever they're accusing you of, yes, you're certainly showing that you really don't think it's the truth, but you're also making the whole thing a lot worse for yourself if the judge goes against you or anything along those lines, right? So I personally definitely wouldn't go for that way, but maybe their lawyers advised them to. But then again, brings up the point, did the lawyers advise them to just go on with all operations or why are they going through with every single thing? You might say, Dusty, the escrows cannot be stopped. Fair, but there's keeping 100 million XRP for the XRP ecosystem. They can definitely stop that. They can definitely put it back. I mean, um, what is the company now? When you're recording, you sometimes forget those freaking MoneyGram it has also stopped utilizing XRP for right now, right? Or, or has stopped their tie with Ripple for a little second. So what exactly are they gonna spend this 100 million XRP on then? I really wanna know. I know you guys can't help because we really can't find out, but I, Percy want to know what's happening to it. And it's too bad that Ripple doesn't give full clarity on this. I know following some NDAs and whatever, they cannot give everything, but still, you, you would think about it in a certain way that it should be kind of public, public tender, is that the way I should say it? Because if they are not the party that is, um, no, if they were kind of a decentralized party, basically, making all of this happen, or if they're acting solely in the best interest for XRP, why wouldn't they be able to let everything be public, right? It supposedly should be where they are the party which control it, have the funds for it, yada, 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 and get things done. But the way they're doing it sometimes right now, it feels like they're just doing this purely for Ripple. I know the, the whole money grab more deal is very positive for XRP, don't get me wrong, but a lot of these things should be made public, in my opinion, if they want to really appeal for the SEC and say, hey, you know, everybody could have done this. We're just the guys who are holding the money right now, but it could have been anybody. And right now it feels too much like Ripple is in control of everything, also for a good part, just for Ripple as a company. 
Yeah, I'm thinking about that sometimes. Like, how could they make their life easier? Maybe something along those lines, right? Could have been something to help. And it's also something to think about for yourself. Do you like XRP, uh, even though that, that is happening? Moving on, though, David Swartz posted, What luck. This store just happens to be or have precisely the sign I need. It says, In case of equipment breakdown emergency, call this, wait for beep, then oi, mobile telephone access. Or 01, maybe. Uh, and, and somebody put down, in case of emergency, XRP, and I just, I giggled a little bit. Thought you guys might giggle too. And, uh, do you eat this? Do you like this? Do you like the little gif? Moving on, the blockchain bull. I laughed a little bit about this one. Put, my realistic price prediction by Q3 2021. <sighs> and, um, I'm not sure if he's just completely joking or is there some, some truth to it. I think it's just a full-on joke though. But he put in a little bit of work to put all these currencies out there. Ethereum 25k, dot 10,000, Link 6700, XRP 58 uh, something. I'm not sure what it is right now. 582, ADA 50 bucks. He's a crazy guy, huh? It's pretty funny. Uh, but I personally don't think that this stuff is actually very good for the crypto community as you're basically, you know, kind of putting people some some faith that's really not supposed to be there. In a different sense, he's just messing around, right? That's the way I, s I like to see it right now. He's just messing around, a little fun price prediction. Unless he's really honestly thinking that this is going to happen, then we might have a little bit of a problem. Ripple back developer launches proposal to bring red hot NFTs to the XP ledger. I also want to know from you guys if you're into NFTs or not. I've actually really stayed away from them mostly because I... I've seen some of them crash hard, but you know, fun thing is I also used to stay away from DeFi a little bit because I saw so many people losing money. Uh, I entered into it though a little bit later and it's freaking good, right? So yeah, I'm also thinking maybe I should get into NFTs. If any of you guys know a little bit more about it, maybe educate me because I'm still a little bit of a newbie on it. Uh, I will read myself into it surely, so surely, but you know, it's not really my cup of tea too much because I think the NFT game is really just, if you have a good marketing scheme, you have a couple of good influencers and you have something which you can kind of, you know, put online, I guess. Well, you, you got you got yourself business. But I, I think a lot of the NFT business here is really dumb. Like selling moments, for example. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it just depends on how, this again, my basic understanding of these things, right? If you're selling a moment on some blockchain, I guess, of some sporting event, it's basically just, yeah, if everybody were to use one um, standard, then that would work, right? If everybody were to use one crypto or something like that, or one blockchain, I guess, it would all work or one project. But if everybody uses a different one, then you can always sell this project or to sell this moment on every single one of them. And I always don't really get the restrictions that people make for them either, where it's like, well, if you collateralize something or basically that moment, for example, if it's not issued by the official licensor of that program, then you only have what somebody just made and decided to, to put there, right? So what would stop somebody from doing the same thing? I know the rules in the system have said that, but what, what stops somebody from making it somewhere else? And why do you really want to have that program since it doesn't mean anything? It's just some guy who came up with, hey, you can own this program on this network, on this platform, but it doesn't mean anything anymore. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm also too old for uh, in, in terms of crypto. I've been here for too long that I don't get the NFT things. Maybe it's also me keeping myself back because I don't fully understand it, right? So I'm honestly saying here, I don't know well enough to say if it's good or bad. I'm going to check into it and I'll give you guys a better uh, review on that, I would say. Then Flare Network says, reminder, holders of integrated currencies, XRP, XLM, Doge, LTC, will be able to earn Flare, or Spark, I should say, daily by minting their tokens onto Flare as F assets. It's interesting, though. It's interesting what they're building. It's interesting. I still think it's dumb, but it's getting more and more interesting as time moves on. So I guess I have to give it a couple of kudos where it is due. My pants are falling apart a little bit. No. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the stitches are getting out. That is very... Oh, no. It's my it's my underpants. Uh, we're good. It's the underpants. The stitches are coming out. I have like a very big thread. Cardano <laughs> Merry Heart Upgrade set to go live. Here's why it matters. The Merry Heart Upgrade opens up exciting new use cases for Cardano and has whetted investors' appetites. Cardano introduces a key platform upgrade called Mary today, and Mary will make Cardano into a multi-asset network similar to Ethereum. It will include new use cases and features and enable users to create tokens. Mary, named after Frankenstein author Mary Shelley, Cardano's new upgrade goes live at 21.44.51 UTC today, which is um, a couple of hours ago. I guess right now when I'm recording, 
it is right around uh, a little little while ago but once you're gonna see it in like an hour hour and a half or so it's a little while ago 12 21 44 51 but yeah i saw a lot of people asking what does it mean what does it matter well it actually doesn't do too much you can see here, Mary's main purpose is to transform Cardano into a multi-asset network similar to Ethereum, but with some advantages. According to IOHK or IOG right now, the protocol's developers, users can transaction or can transact with tokens, but without the need for smart contracts. This means sending a token on Cardano won't be more expensive than sending its native token, ADA, unlike with Ethereum. But I also wouldn't say I completely understand exactly how it works. There's more to it. Uh, the point being, they have an upgrade from which capabilities come, right? The thing is though, as we've always seen, a upgrade like this actually doesn't necessarily do too much from day one. With Cardano, it's a little bit different because there's actually a little bit more capabilities that they've gotten from day one right now because it's a real upgrade, not like a, a concept upgrade, but still then, it's not gonna all of a sudden have a huge ton of people on there or, or developers on there day one or anything like that. It's kind of a gradual process. That is what the price should have gone down a little bit, but since Bitcoin and crypto basically pumped, uh, Cardano also did okay. Attorney General James warns investors about extreme risk when investing in crypto, issues additional warning to those facilitating trading of virtual currencies. I always tell people, man, if you think it's a big risk, oh, do whatever feels good to you. If you want to get out, get out. You shouldn't feel guilty. You shouldn't feel as if crypto is the only way to do things. A lot of regulations can come. And you should always be uh, careful with that because they, mess, they might mess us all up. They might make us all broke. Who knows? Cardano is set for price correction after touching record high. Potentially, it's not a certain thing, though. Is it overvalued? That's, again, debatable. I think it's a very high price right now, but it could be justified by what they're doing because Ethereum is also very high, and they're basically on a par on some fields, right? Ethereum has flaws. Cardano has flaws because Cardano is not uh, that far just quite yet, but they're getting there. Can Cardano ADA be the future of blockchain? Again, you might have to, have to ask yourself that question. Is it going to be Cardano, though? Is it going to be Polkadot? Is it going to be BNB? What is it going to be? Dubai-based FD7 Ventures launches new $250 million fund focused on Cardano and Polkadot. Developers in India who built on Cardano and Polkadot could get $250 million from this Dubai fund. And I think it's interesting how these guys are moving right now. They put $750 million right into Cardano and Polkadot. And right now they started a huge fund investing in developer teams that build on there. These guys are smart. But again, that, that may be what you can do if you have a billion or five or seven. I don't know how many to have billion dollars. Then Elon Musk, SEC probe over Dogecoin tweets would be awesome. Billionaires find $20 billion by agency over tweets in 2018. Uh, partially Tesla, partially him. Right now, though, it is all about uh, Dogecoin. He's just joking around saying it will be awesome. But in a different sense, he also thinks it's fine, though, because, well, he thinks it's freedom of speech in some degree, and he can just say whatever he wants. Maybe it's also because he doesn't care. I, I'm not sure. This guy, 500 IQ, so I'm not sure what his plan is. Significant Bitcoin drop as Coinbase announces IPO. I don't think these two things are completely related, but you might say so. I personally don't think so, though. It's like Coinbase um, has announced their IPO, okay? And Bitcoin dropped. Two different things. And then XRPL fork Casino Coin uh, Ledger abandoned by its flagship project. Here is why. XRP Ledger welcomes back blockchain-based gambling project Casino Coin. It replaces purpose-made XRPL fork with the original version of the protocol. And I want to keep it at that because I don't care about Casino Coin too much. I don't want to talk about it too much it's just gone back right now as some guys from zoom were talking about it Mitsubi was talking about it saying personally i believe this is really a milestone the csc is migrating their xpl fork back to the xpl ledger or sorry guys the xrp ledger this wouldn't have happened without the ongoing improvements and support by the xrpl community developers rippled developers and the exact quote we're proud to announce that Xum Wallet will be the go-to wallet for the new ecosystem. The CSC made the bold and exciting choice to migrate their tokens and technology to the XRP Ledger. XRP Labs will add a user-friendly flow to Xum for the CSC migration. And that is that. Guys, thank you all for watching this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys again in another one.